And it's Ken Kreitzer for CVSI Talking Business, our interview series, Talk with Leaders in the Field of Digital Marketing, Banking, Insurance, Customer Service, and Business Education. We'll highlight our great team at CVSI. We are celebrating our 50th anniversary in 2022 uh, with our founder, Bob Conti. Now, I have a chance to talk with our good friend, Patty Devine. Um, uh, Patty is a digital marketer, an educator, uh, has operated a company for 20 years, Patty Devine Incorporated, and also had an extensive tenure with Time Inc. Patty, good to see you. Great to be here, Ken. Good to see you. You were in New York City for a, a good meeting at the Hearst Building, a fascinating place to visit, uh, for the Federation of International Publishers, a UK-based organization, also uh, partnered that meeting with the Media Audience Marketing Content Association at a nice holiday gathering. Uh, tell us about it. Yeah, there are a lot of big ideas in that meeting. Yeah, um, really exciting. So um, MACMA, the Media Audience Content Marketing Organization, we changed our name last year. Um, and we uh, very much wanted to get everybody in person for the first time in three years. And we had you know this great holiday party, which is just a party. And we thought, you know, we want to get a content partner in and we contacted FIP um, and they are basically our equivalent in the UK and Europe. And they had their insider event starting at 9 a.m. Um, prior to our luncheon and trivia game party. So it was, it was a really amazing event and the views from the Hearst Tower are beautiful and a beautiful day and great energy. So we loved it. Very good. Sounds like a fascinating uh, time. And uh... A lot of key topics, uh, you know, one, and you told us an interesting story about how companies, especially in the publishing industry, worked on uh, pivoted during uh, the pandemic. And you talked about one that went door to door teaching customers about how to read their digital subscription. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, the, the Insider event was great. It was kind of a rapid fire set of like interviews and then podium presentations and full of amazing content. And um, one of the speakers, uh, you know, was a producer of e-readers and obviously we had problems with print and distribution during COVID. And so um, they worked with the Arkansas Gazette and um, went door to door and gave everybody iPads and showed them how to use them, including how to open an iPad and get into it and then use the e-reader. And, um, you know, it was very interesting. They, um, they found it, adoption was slow at first, even with the in-person education, but over time, it took about three weeks. And at the end of the test, they had 80% of the people engaging with the e-reader regularly, consuming the Arkansas Gazette that way, and um, had a really big impact. And it was a great story um, about how to get somebody from a, a traditional print product onto digital during crisis, and then retain them over the long term. Very good. Now, may, maybe you could uh, assess how, for your point, being a professional in the publishing industry for quite a while, how the publishing industry worked through the pandemic. Uh, and certainly, as you, as you said, one example, uh, increase their digital delivery and also monetizing digital. Uh, you know, a lot of newspapers now ask you to subscribe uh, in order to read their uh, more extensive content. Sure, and um, you know, it depends on if you're talking, talking to a journalist or a circulation person. Um, and of course, you know, the information should be free, but obviously good journalism costs money. Um, so, you know, the idea is really, we saw huge spikes in, in demand for content, um, a great presentation um, from one of the lifestyle magazines. Uh, they just really saw an increase in, um, in interest because home was really home again. You know, it wasn't a place where you leave your wallet and your keys and your coat and sleep. Um, you're there all the time, you've got family to feed. And, and so they really saw this increased engagement and what everybody was like, we well, just don't want to see a fall off. Um, you know, right at the end. So uh, as, as audience development people, we spent a lot of time with that conversion rate optimization, getting people into our funnels, and then making sure that it wasn't just a flash in the pan and they stayed, you know, we'd spent all this money supporting them, providing the, the content, um, and keeping that as a longer term. And, and that's the, the publishers, because of those efforts and all of the two years of incredibly hard work we put in, are seeing those results with increased audiences and you know people consuming um you know digital and print and, and in their preferred channel so 
um, yeah, we, we stuck it out and I think we're in a good place today. You came back with an interesting uh, observation, many in the, in the, at this meeting about uh, the, the need to uh, not just look at screens all day, but actually read print books, newspapers, and, and documents. I find that all the time. I still get uh, the New York Times uh, uh, print delivery every day. And, uh, you know, I, I tend, when I do radio, I, I, I always want to have my notes printed out uh, so I'm ready to go. Um, and that was an observation of uh, some of the uh, speakers at the meeting. Definitely. Um, so screen fatigue is real. Um, and uh, what we lost, you know, and what social media takes away is that um, that linear way to, to consume information. You know, you're, you're there doing something about work or looking at a recipe and oh, a cat video and oh, this notification. And so um, what these publishers found while they you know, had huge demand for the digital during the pandemic is that now people want to sit down with a piece of paper you know, on the beach. Uh, we, we used to call it the three Bs, bed, beach, and bath. Um, and uh, they just want to sit down with that, that piece of paper and read articles or long form content. And publishers are packaging that up. You know, it, it's, it's really, it's the content that's important and the distribution of that content. But we always know a consumer wants to consume in their realm, you know, and uh, so, you know, just go online and, or just watch a YouTube video and like, I, maybe I don't know how that works, you know, and can I just get a piece of paper that tells me how to do that and really absorb that process? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I still like to read off of print. Now, uh, obviously one of the big topics came up at your session is what's happening at Twitter from the Elon Musk takeover and the changes being made and the uncertainty of what Twitter is going to be in the future. Uh, what were some of the observations and concerns that expressed at the meeting? Well, one of the big publishers really talked about, um, they've been having a lot of strategic meetings about what does a post, what does buzz look like in a post Twitter world? Um, and, uh, you know, so, so um, right now Twitter is the platform that creates buzz. It doesn't mean that something else emerges. It's not like buzz is going to go away or these fast conversations are going to go away. And so there's a lot of anxiety and fear and uncertainty and it was really less about the fact that this is going to go away and more that we have built huge communities. Twitter is a place where you can have these niche little communities and just talk to your people and that is the fear that's happening with Twitter is that you're going to lose your community. Not that you're going to lose Twitter because, you know, um, but that I've built this community and it's just going to disappear. Well, Twitter is where I know journalists go first. When something happens in the world or even locally, uh, you check Twitter first. That's where reports tend to come first. And uh, we obviously use it for a lot of our business and, and some of our other reporting uh, to keep on top of things. But uh, well, that is concern, all the changes that may happen at Twitter and what the yeah. platform may look like. Now, well, what can I just say, make one point? Uh, there was a comment at the media. Uh, someone said, oh, they'll just go to the media. And they said, well, where do you think the media gets the information? <laughs> Absolutely. So. Uh, you know, I do radio work. And the first thing, if something happened overnight, you check Twitter. Yeah. Because it's going to have the most up to the minute uh, reports on what might be happening. And then you... You know, the longer articles come out later on other platforms. So mm -hmm. uh, it's become an important uh, uh, service and, and we hope it uh, continues as a good one. Now, uh, one of the things that you talked about at the meeting, uh, you told, told me about was about matching audiences uh, to different uh, social media platforms, uh, you know, for Facebook, Facebook versus Twitter versus Instagram versus YouTube and others. What were some of the comments about matching audience to platforms? So, yeah, um, so a lot of people like to just write a post and distribute across the, the platforms, um, which we never recommend. Each one has a, a different kind of customization, but, um, you know, something like a, a TikTok, uh, you know, they said it's a jazz hands kind of platform. You're just performing on TikTok. Um, and you know it's there's generational differences you know i have to ask younger people if they even have a facebook now um and uh but there's also sort of just differences in in values and and how you live your life right and so you're going to be attracted to that platform and so it's different for different businesses if you're professional services you're going to have a lot more on linkedin um, but there is still a community of people in Facebook that are business people. So just understanding sort of how the communities and audiences work and the type of people they attract and then putting your strategy around that, not 
the other way around. Absolutely. Now, uh, one of the things that you mentioned to me uh, came up, a good point on measurements, uh, OKRs, and uh, other means to, uh, to measure uh, what your readership is, and then also how to prioritize. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So um, my favorite presentation of the day was from Condé Nast, and uh, they put up lots of charts and, and planograms and, and timelines. And, uh, you know, she, she really talked about, um, you know, how you organize your Condé Nast. You have so much content and the challenge is like not creating the content, which is anyone who's not a content creator has. The, the challenge is organizing that and distributing it. So using OKRs, which are objectives and key results, um, and it's a whole framework and process, she was able to really get her team rocking and rolling, presenting results, reducing anxiety because they weren't under deadline pressures, and then used all of that to sort of run it up the flagpole to the executive team who built their KPIs, their key performance indicators around the OKRs, right? So, um, you know, I think in the past we were having executives tell us we have to make these numbers and by using OKRs at a sort of mid-level management level, you're saying to the management who's sitting, you know, doing strategy, like, here's the boots on the ground thing. Can we tweak or evolve your KPIs for the reality of digital and this massive content distribution undertaking we're taking? So yeah, I think we get lost in the platforms and the processes, but you are just running a content distribution business and you know, how do you do that and get to the monetization, which is what the executive team and the shareholders want. Very good. Now it's uh, December time for uh, forecasting. Next year, I know we they had done a, like, like in the summer, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think we're all looking into uh, 2023, and uh, fortunately, the stock market's been up a little bit lately, which is a kind of a positive indicator. Um, and I know at the meeting they said they took some long-term forecasts, even out a hundred years. What could what? I'm curious what they said might be uh, what what uh, folks then will be dealing with a hundred years from now. Right. So, I mean, this this media industry we know has been around 100, 150 years. And, um, you know, obviously we're not planning for 100 years, but the question was, how will this evolve over time? Will there be print? What will the platforms look like? And uh, just going back to my last comment, um, you own a bunch of valuable content and platforms are going to come and go and distribution channels. Um, so staying focused on you know, preserving your brand essence and your values and your message and your teams and, and um, just kind of working through it the way we've done business for a million years and before there was like the speed of digital, you know? So, um, you know, the, the executives are saying, of course, print is gonna be here and we're gonna have some sort of digital distribution, whether it's through Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk or something we've never even thought of before. Um, you know, the metaverse, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but the point is that we are content producers and audience developers, and that has been our job for 50 years and will be for as long as we're on the planet. And so I've heard it said that a, a, a print book has got a better chance of lasting 100 years than most of our digital storage uh, mechanisms uh, today. Mm -hmm. And uh, I certainly uh, believe that for scrapbooks and, and family photos and and important records. Uh, you we know, have friends print. that are archivists, so yeah, it's it's a big job to preserve all that paper. But um, you're right; it's it stays a lot longer than the cloud. Patty Devine, Patty Devine Inc. Tell us a little bit about the services of your company. Sure. Um, so uh, I'm a customer journey marketer, and I help my clients monetize that journey um, through conversion optimization. Um, Ken and I were talking earlier, everybody puts the content out and you know gets the engagement and they're like, why am I not making any money? So our job is to help you make money with your content and your, your marketing. Very good, Patty Devon, great to talk with you today and our best wishes to you and uh, your family for the holidays and going into 2023. Yes, looking forward to it, Ken. Good to see you. This is Ken Kratzer for CBSI Talking Business. Thanks for watching.